Thank you, and I bring you greetings from Silicon Valley. I am from the town of Cupertino, which you might recognize as the headquarters of Apple Computer. But the discussion we're going to have today is about something that brings us together as brothers and sisters and the family on this blue planet that's on the screen behind me. Even though I'm from a place that's far away, I want you to depart today realizing that what you, what you do and what you decide in your lives will have a direct impact on me and my family. And frankly, what I do, and my family does, has a direct impact on you. I grew up in the Central Valley of California. It is an agricultural area, very similar to Punjab. And I grew up with four brothers on about a mile square piece of land. And uh, being ambitious young men, we always had our ideas about what was fun and what was interesting. And so I'm showing you a picture here of the fact that we had dairy cows and we had farms and orchards and all sorts of things that were wonderful places for us as young men to create adventures and to uh, figure out how we're going to entertain ourselves. A major priority for us, of course, was how to move around in our vast domain. And so we had motorcycles, we had small dune buggies and other vehicles that we would use to haul things around like wood to build forts and uh, sticks and other things that we made tools of. So we were quite inventive and innovative young men, sometimes uh, in very interesting ways. Uh, one time we were trying to figure out how to get a motorcycle to start and so we tied it up to a horse and we figured that the horse had horse power. <laughs> that was true actually because when you tie a motorcycle to the horse and the horse takes off running, the motorcycle actually could be jump-started. And so now the horse, of course, thought he was being chased by a motorcycle, which was unfortunate for me because I was riding the motorcycle and tied to the horse. The horse jumped over a ditch, the motorcycle crashed into the ditch. I was fine, but I was no longer on the motorcycle. I was lying on the ground. So that, that type of innovation, which by the way, the innovation that was missing there was how do you untie the motorcycle from the horse, was something we uh, experienced firsthand and had a direct impact on me in my life. The youth that you see here though, are young, excited, inspired young men that didn't realize that they would soon be wrecking on a motorcycle because of some of their inventions that weren't fully thought through. And my four brothers and I uh, grew up together on the farm and went on to found the largest raw milk dairy in the world. It's on 400 acres on the land that we grew up on. And it is now a, a, a business that we've shared as a family and now have built it with our wives and our children and our nephews. And it has brought us together as a family throughout our, our entire life. We also built one of the largest organic almond farms in the world. And the Central Valley is very special in that 99% of the almonds in the United States are grown really around where I grew up. And I didn't realize it when I was young, but it's because in the wintertime there's a fog that makes it very cool but doesn't freeze. So it's a very special area. And here in India, much of the almond product that you buy actually comes from a place near Fresno, California, where I grew up. My brothers and I saw this as a business opportunity, and we built up an organic almond farming business, again, managing it with our, our family together. I went on, though, to get into biofuels. And biofuels are an interesting industry because they take the materials that you grow on the farm and they turn it into energy. And I got very interested in energy. Energy, of course, was what was powering our motorcycles and our cars uh, at, the, at the farm. But interestingly enough, I didn't realize until older, uh, that I was older that we actually did not use electricity. We used liquid energy in the form of biofuels and other things. And as I was growing in my business, I uh, bought an airplane and I started flying around the United States and then Central America and then Asia came here, I went to the Middle East, went to Dubai and Bahrain, and I discovered that the world had an energy problem. Specifically, I came to India 
and came to find that the average India person, about 10 years ago, used only one barrel per year of crude oil for everything. Energy, electronics, plastics, everything. About one barrel per year. The average person in China was about 1.6 barrels, but the average person in the United States was 25 barrels per year per person. And I had developed a career uh, in funding these types of companies, and specifically the internet. And I discovered that here in Asia, when you give a mobile phone to somebody out in Punjab or Pune, and they start watching the internet, that their consumption of crude oil changes. Why? Because, quite frankly, electricity in the form of solar and wind and hydro and nuclear is not transportable very easily. It's the same problem I had on the farm, right, when we had the motorcycles and the dune buggies and had to pull them with horses, is that you couldn't plug in your motorcycle and then go driving around in a circle around where your plug-in was. So you had to have a type of energy that could be stored and moved, and that liquid fuels were the solution for that. So I've discovered, though, that there's a problem, that the dependence we have on liquid fuels makes us depend, dependent on crude oil. And so when you give the internet to 2.5 billion Indians, Chinese, and Asians, suddenly they want to do the same thing I was doing on the farm. They don't only want their own motorcycles, they want their own cars and trucks and vans, and some of them want their own airplanes, like I have. And they all consume liquid fuel. I would like to point out to you, plugging in my airplane and flying around is not a very realistic way to fly. So you're dependent on very dense, mobile, storable fuels. But here's what happens when you burn those fuels. This is the global emissions of carbon dioxide that comes out of burning petroleum. And when you put that in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere warms up, we get climate change. And climate change, of course, is very potentially damaging to people in India and China and everywhere else. But you really have no choice. Why? Because in making electricity, you're burning coal. In, burn, in running your vehicles, you're burning crude oil. So I went on to found four companies that do about $1.8 billion per year revenue that specifically do not use petroleum to make the fuel that's in your cars and that flies your airplanes. And in California, which is a state that measures how much carbon goes into the atmosphere, and then incentivizes people like me to make more of that fuel, you might notice about 85% of the carbon reduction that's happened in California came from companies like our, ours who built plants that are able to not emit carbon into the atmosphere. I want to get back to the beginning of the story, though. I mentioned that my brothers and I grew up in an area with almond orchards, and this, this type of orchard is from the Central Valley and looks exactly like what I remember as a child, running around with my brothers and discovering how to hurt ourselves doing a variety of different things. One morning when I was 12 years old, my mother came in very early in the morning and told me that my brother, who's seven years old, was in the far right of the picture, had been killed the night before on a foggy night driving in the Central Valley of California. He was seven years old. And at that time, I was very sad for my family. But I was more sad about the life that my brother David could have had and what he could have done to impact not only our family and our community, but the whole world. And as I toured the world and built plants in the United States and frankly built a 50 million gallon biodiesel plant in Kakanada, India, east of Hyderabad, I came to appreciate that what we do does have an opportunity to impact you here in India and the rest of the world. And so I went back to the place where I grew up. And every 20 years, what you see here are trees. And those trees are knocked down and the trees are replaced. 
And from that, you end up with a waste product. It's the wood from those trees. That wood, it can either be burned and make pollution, much like what happens here in northern India, when you burn the crops and you look out and you see the atmosphere as pollution. We do the same thing in California from these orchards. So my team and I are expanding an existing $150 million biofuels plant that's the largest plant in California that we own to invest another $150 million in a plant that will look just like this. And next year, if you come to California and come and visit our company, you will see that we're taking the orchard wood that would have been burned and create air pollution and climate change, and we're converting it into advanced biofuels, replacing the petroleum that is creating the carbon dioxide that's creating climate change. Now, what's amazing and is a unique insight is that the plants that we're using for this fuel actually grow based upon the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, whereas petroleum is carbon that's in the ground. So for every gallon that you drive a car using the fuel from this plant, you will actually be taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, it will grow almonds, it will make fuel, that then when your car burns it, goes back in the atmosphere, but there's less carbon going back in the atmosphere. It's below zero carbon emissions. Bill Gates did a TED talk, it's a very popular one, has almost two million views. The title of his talk is Innovating to Zero. And what he meant was innovating to zero carbon. This plant and the innovation and funding behind it will take us to innovating to below zero, allowing us to reverse the effects of climate change at the same time the benefits of reducing air pollution by using this waste material not to burn and create air pollution, but actually to make your lives better. I want to comment to you that India is at a decision point and that the leaders of India and the population of India in its rapid growth of 6 or 7% per year have to make a decision about whether it invests in the innovation to use the waste products that are currently being burned and creating air pollution as the fuel for your future. Or whether you become more dependent on imported petroleum and burning coal and burning petroleum natural gas as your source of energy. And each one of you will make that decision. It will not be your political leaders because they are elected by you. And they, unfortunately, are going to go with what you think is what your future needs to look like. We are together on this small blue planet, parked in the middle of a very large universe. And we are all brothers and sisters on this same planet. And what climate change has taught us is that the decisions that I make in the companies that I start, the projects we fund, the decisions that you make in how you select the energy that goes into your cars and your homes, the politicians that you support, are directly connected because we are in the same family on the same blue planet. I would like you to remember that as you make your career choices, but also as you make your choices at the pump on using renewable fuels or not using renewable fuels. Thank you for your time today.